Uh, so I do have some rules for our Q&A. I know rules, boo. Rule number one, no request. No, can you say this line in this character's voice? Uh, I, I know may, maybe the voices come out today, but please, no request. Uh, no, can you sing happy birthday to my grandma? She couldn't be here. Sorry, grandma, I'll be here next year. Uh, rule number two. Rule number two, as you can see, the line for questions goes almost to the back of the building. So we want to get through as many questions as possible. I know you may have two, three, four, eight questions. Find your one best question and ask that. Because again, we want to get through as many questions as possible. And rule number three is have fun. Are you guys ready to practice rule number three? But I have some, before I ask questions up here, I have some questions for, for you guys. Where's my, where's my Charlie Morningstar fans at? So excited, uh, Erica Headington is. Where's my Radio Demon fans at? Where's my Angel Dust fans at? Valentino? Where's my Cherry Bomb fans? Where's my Nifty fans? So we're gonna go to the back. We're gonna make sure we are up and running because guess what? Not only are we broadcasting to all of your eyeballs here tonight, we are also broadcasting live on our GalaxyCon Live YouTube page. There is a lot of people who wish they were here today where you are. So when we go live, the next time I come out that curtain, I want you to make so much noise that we break the damn speakers. I don't do that. I, all right. I'll be right back out.
Hello, GalaxyCon Richmond! And hello to everybody watching at home on GalaxyCon Live. This is incredible. Where? So where are my has-been fans at? And where are my friends who were dragged into this into this room? Are you guys ready to have a happy day in hell? With no further ado, please help me welcome Erica Henningsen, Blake Roman, Amir Talai, Kamiko Glenn, Christina Alabato, and Joel Perez. Is this thing on? I don't think when I was backstage and I said, it's crazy out there, I don't think that you believed me. <laughs> this is incredible. Wow. Oh, Hello. No. Hi. <laughs> hey, folks. <laughs> Y'all look beautiful. <laughs> My mind is blown right now. I've sensed a color scheme going on in this room. Uh, how how are you all today? Uh, Joel? how are you all the way down there at the, at the end? I am doing so good. It, it's so it's so special to um, you know VO and animation is done in isolation and so it's so special to be able to like actually engage with people in person. Something that's so special to us is so special to you and that's just beautiful to see. So thank you. What a you. thrill. So how, how, okay, how many of you are not from Richmond? How many of you came to this show just to meet our has-been cast? And how have these folks been treating you at your tables? Boo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've been having the best time. It's literally been like a nonstop party. I, I love Blake it. Blake completely lost his voice because he I mean, loves talking to you all so Yeah, it's, it's running out on me, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> all right, so where were my hands of people who have never seen the show? All right, so. Y'all never seen okay, it? Get out. So, Erica, get can, can, can out. Who, who's get out. Who, can, who can give me a 30-second elevator, uh, elevator pitch? What if we just reenacted all eight episodes right now? Okay, right there. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it must be us all, all watching Erica do a summary, like a lightning speed. It would be speed. really entertaining. Oh my God, there should be that. like, oh my God, do like there should be a one woman version, version of Has Been Hotel, Hotel where Hotel. you play well, everyone. I believe, okay, I believe when in episode one, when she goes to Adam and she's like, okay, I don't have a lot of time left. And she like time warps to like, they come down once a year and they kill everybody like that. Uh -huh. That's pretty close. <laughs> so just look for that clip and you'll get it. <laughs> they should do that though. I accept that challenge, Amir to Uh Okay, so for the six people who haven't seen the show before. <laughs> um, uh, Ultimate shade. Uh, 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 Erica plays uh, Charlie Morningstar, who's the daughter I... of Lucifer. And uh, she decides that she wants to help rehabilitate sinners so that they can go up to heaven. Uh, and there's uh, controversy about whether that's possible or not. Good enough? Really yeah, good. Yes, yes. I need really to write that down. <laughs> How's it feel? With a little bit of a, you know, language vulgarity mixed in. Just a, just a little. No. So uh, with that being said, I have to ask, like, what were your first impressions of the script? Uh, and how much did you know before you auditioned and before you were cast? Well, there was a pilot, so it was quite unusual. Yeah. Normally, that's not the case. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of artwork, I think. They had a lot to show us, actually. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice because we got to see what was already there before and then take our own spin on all that stuff. And, you know, the show existing is so special because we have all of you and all of our new fans and we get to have this whole universe together. It's very yeah. cool. And I, I stumbled upon the pilot in 2020. Um, so I, I, I He's sort a true of, fan. 
I said I was a fan first. And so nice. <laughs> So it's insane to now be a part of the Helliverse in this way and to this thing that I saw and I was like, wait, it's a musical and they're demons in hell. Like I want that. I this is everything I want. So I'd be a, I would I'd be a fan of the show even if I wasn't in it. So it's who really who dope. would you be the biggest fan of yeah, in the who, show? Yeah, who Joel? If you make it in good. It. Well, obviously Valentino. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm being honest, my favorite is Serpentius. He's he's Dang, so good. So, yeah, it's hard to beat. <laughs> hey, who thought when yeah, he yeah. when he got killed in hell? Who thought? Spoiler that alert. <sighs> Whatever, if you haven't seen it. Spoiler before. alert. Oh yeah, oh, that little 30 second summary, someone dies. Amira. <laughs> who thought who thought that was it for him? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sad, right? Pretty sad. <laughs> oh, there's a back All those abandoned goes, egg boys. I thought I was dead too. <laughs> Y'all, when I read that episode with the cherry and punches, you better believe I was like, oh my God. <laughs> So uh, I was watching, I, I was, I've been binge watching uh, all weekend in, in my hotel and my roommate was like, oh, is this the, the has been hotel? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's like, oh, I want to watch a little bit of it. And I was like, oh, well, let me start from the beginning. And he was like, uh, no, I'll just pick up from right here. Uh, it was episode number four. Ooh. Rough. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> I mean... So Blake and Joel, I have to, I have to ask. So, yeah, no, go, what, go ahead. What, I don't even what, know what no, I'm gonna what ask. Do you have to ask? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I mean, was filming that difficult for you? Um, sure. I mean, all of episode four um, was uh, in in of itself. I mean, it was it was. I wouldn't say it was difficult. It was just more, there was a lot of stuff that we had to have a really like keen eye on, be sensitive toward, okay, how do we want to go about doing this? Um, it was one of, it was just, it was a, one of my favorite episodes for obvious reasons, but, <laughs> but like, like just seeing the whole journey and the arc of the episode, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I, I, I found it very rewarding to tell uh, a story in a facet of Angel that I felt like needs to be told and, and needs to be reflected in our in our show and done so in a in a in a sensitive way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and I'm happy to say that mine and Joelle's personal relationship outside of the show has horrible. Suffered. That's why we're separated yeah. and oh, by okay, this table. Okay. Okay. Actually, sit down. All right, never mind. Like, <laughs> never mind. I take it back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Minimum three people between them at all times. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was for me it was really interesting because like you know we don't get the full season. Like we get each episode as we're about to record it. So like episode two, Val is just like. A, a, a chaos monster bitch. So I was like, oh, this is so fun. Like, like Valentino's just so crazy. And then, um, it's just so crazy. And then I was reading episode four and I was like, damn. I was like, I was like, whoa, okay, we're going there. And, um, and I think what, what I think I hope comes across in, in the performance from both myself and from Blake is that. We're treating it with honesty. We're treating it with reality. It's not about like, it's for for a show that like can be kind of wacky and silly. It's nice to like drop into um, some truth for a bit. And so as an actor, that's very challenging. Um, I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> and so like when we finished that, when I finished recording that episode, I was like, damn, I'm like depressed. I was like. <laughs> I was like, man, why do I feel so terrible? Uh, so, uh, but I think it's useful and, and important to include those narratives and that storyline because I think the show explores the, the nuance of redemption. It explores who gets to decide who's good and bad uh, in, a, in a world that tries to be very binary and black and white. The reality is that there are many shades of gray and I think it's so cool that um, the show is exploring that and it's resonating with so many people. Well said. By the way, this is the, this line for questions goes all the way to the back. So before, oh, holy shit. Before, <laughs> before, before we get to our audience questions, I have, I have one quick question to ask all of you. 
Um, and that is, it's, it's been playing nonstop in my ears uh, for the past uh, probably two weeks. But do you have a favorite song from the soundtrack? It's, it's Loser Baby for me. I'm, it has to be. It has to be. Any, any time. I mean, that, that song in of itself uh, is like a warm hug. And also Keith fucking David. Like, Wait. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. I, I need his voice in my headphones all the time. Like, like it's, it's just, it's, it, very, it very much puts me at ease with myself when I, when I need it, you know? Can we please hear Amir singing as Blake his favorite line? Yeah, Five. Just that, yeah. just that line. I sold my soul to a psychopathic freak. <laughs> and you think that makes you unique? Get out of here, man. <laughs> I gotta go against the great. My favorite song is it starts with sorry. Anybody else? So good. Thank you. And it's not just because I'm biased, but Sir Punches is so cute in that song. His little his little weepy eyes, the weepy, weepy eyes, eyes are the ones. I'm blink. So sorry. <laughs> I just like that you don't know what he's gonna sound like when he sings, and he sounds exactly the same. <laughs> That is painful to do. I don't know how he does that. Also, the song in um, uh, when Emily and Charlie are singing, like, when hell is forever, then yeah, heaven, heaven must be up. up. Like, that, that shit slapped. I was like, so this sad. is, this that, is like, fucking good. That scratches my like 80s rock musical theater women belting oh, so in good. harmony itch. So good. Wait, and that, that song is like, it's Erica Henningsen. It is. It is uh, Patina Miller. Patina Miller, Shoba, it's, Jessica, uh, Jessica Voss, Brightman, like, man. and Steph B. Steph. Like, man, get into it. Just, it's so good. I like more than anything. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh yeah. Aww. It makes me tear up. What's the lyric? Like, I'm glad that you're my father. Is, yeah. That uh, like I'm that. Glad that Oh, that lyric makes me cry. I can't wait to see that at like. Time. I would like to the shout out to all the daddies who brought me ducks today. Yes. So many ducks. I feel all, really the, all the father-daughter dances at weddings. I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Also, a lot of people don't know this. Like, we don't record our even our duets together. Yeah. Like, we... So, I didn't know Jeremy Jordan was playing Lucifer, and I showed up for... <laughs> To record more than anything and i'm singing they go we're gonna pipe lucifer in so you can hear a little bit of his phrasing and they start playing it and i go hold the fucking phone is that jeremy jordan and they're like do you know him and i was like yes i know him <laughs> and that's how that happened all right so we're going to attempt are we going to attempt to get a big chunk of this line uh hello what's your name is this on can you yeah it's on. Oh, okay. Hi, Nifty. Hi, Hi Nifty. Um, I'm the tiny creator. Thank you all for being here. We all appreciate it. My question is for Erica. Um, one of Charlie's biggest arguments for why generics should be redeemed is to help with the overpopulation in hell. Hypothetically, if her hotel worked and everybody in hell got redeemed, the population question wouldn't be solved but moved to heaven. What would Charlie do to prevent this predicament? Wait, Did you get that? I, I feel like I'm in ninth grade math class again, and it's like, if a train left at 2 p.m. and was arriving in Wyoming. Okay, so I'm going to say, wait, I actually didn't get it. Okay, I, I'll repeat. Yes. Um, so it, the, the reasoning for what Charlie's about is that there's an overpopulation issue. Yeah, right. If you were to succeed really well, and, a, and all those sinners went up there, there'd be an overpopulation issue up uh, there. Heaven's just bigger. There's more space. <laughs> Boom. Easy. Next question. Thank you. By the way, good luck to everybody with the question following that one. <laughs> I appreciate your question, and I love you. Mwah. Great question. I love that. Hello. Oh. Uh -oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> This one also thank you, but my question is kind of for anyone who's at like a majority, uh, first time conning. Did you have any like expectations or any cool stories from the first time ever doing a convention so far? It's Tell us, you, you baby, virgins. Right? I mean, I, <laughs> it's only your second one. <laughs> I am. I'm just so blown away by the cosplay. Like it is so insane. How it, it's just so incredible that 
something mean so much to put in so much time and effort to create something so beautiful and to like explore like express your own artistic selves through our artistic expression it's so beautiful yeah and uh, i'm blown away by all the art that y'all brought to me and bracelets and earrings the earrings you gave us are so, so amazing so oh good. my god and just like uh, to have all of us here together it just feels really connected and that feels really powerful so thank you all truly and this is oh this is my second one and I thought it was so cool because last year it was my first and people came up to me about has been before it even came out. Wow. So I thought that was really insane. I was like, I, I didn't even know I was announced. <laughs> but it was so cool. You guys know more about me than I do. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. And thank, thank you. you for any shout out or like and fan art Fridays that you did because it means the world to me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, awesome. thank, you. thank you so much. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Des. Yes. Um, so, Hasbun Hotel is very emotional in multiple ways. I just wanted to ask, what is your most emotional moment in the show? Do you, um, do you mean, like to watch or that we did? Or that we did, yeah. Either or? Okay. I get super emotional <laughs> watching. Well, I get super emotional watching Blake in season, watching Angel in watching episode Watching me in general four. every watching day. Blake in general. It's just, <laughs> he's doing. Good, she has guys, a spy cam you know? in his bedroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love. <laughs> um, and also, so that was the mo that's an emotional thing for me to watch, and then an emotional thing to do is the fight that we have. Sure. Just because, like, I hate getting in fights with my friends. It's like the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. And especially for me, it usually happens when I think I'm doing the right thing and really fucking up in other ways. So that was, <laughs> applause for that. Here's, here's yes, misplaced intentions. The right hey, you know what? Way to overstep your boundaries, Erica. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I think um, obviously there's there's moments with, with Val that are, are really emotional, but the one that I keep coming back to and, and, and probably my favorite moment in episode four as well is when he comes back home to the hotel. You apologize. And he actually says, like, Jolly, it's okay. My voice is shot. Fuck. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's okay. I, you know, I forgive you. And, and that is, like, it's just nice. It's, it's, it's really, yeah. It's yeah, friendship. Yeah. How about you, Amir? No emotions. I already, well, yeah. <laughs> Not that I did. Nothing. Uh, but that I watch. Uh, you know, I said it already. The, um, the, the. I love that you're my daughter. I love that you're my father more than anything. <sighs> like literally makes me cry when it's that, like it, watch, it just yeah. hits in such a way. And then also like your voices are so fucking perfect in that moment. Did we that get that? Did, did somebody write that down? <laughs> <laughs> did Amir just compliment me? <laughs> it's great. Emotional moments. Anyone? Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. Amir, I love you. Y'all know mine. You must, right? <laughs> no. When, Oh. When everything happens in episode eight. What are you talking about? Nothing Y'all, <laughs> when I, I'm telling you, that's what, yeah, I couldn't. I read it and I cried. I watched it and I cried. I did it and I cried. <laughs> I grew up, I grew up very conservative Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, and uh, so the, that, that, the, the, the part in, um, in heaven when they're like, if, if hell is forever, then heaven must be a lie. That was just like, that's sort of like, that's sort of like gave gave voice to that thing that always pissed me off growing up and so i was like it's i it's so beautiful that it's like it's, it's sometimes it's hard to find words to describe how you feel so when something does that for you it's so incredible to be to feel seen yeah thank you guys so much yeah. thank, thank you, you. So much. thanks Des. hello hi my name is alexander james and um i watched the First of the first full season, as well as the pilot in Japanese dub, <laughs> and um, and um, seeing your back as your background is is on Broadway musicals. In general, what are some of your favorite um um musicals? Just like in general, whether it be television, um, Broadway, or and movies. Mine's are one um what Wizard of Oz. My Fair Lady, Mulan, and The Brave Little Toaster. Oh. <laughs> what if we just sing a line? What if we go down the line and we sing a line from our favorite musical? 
Oh, boy. I'll Fantastic. do it. I, I'll start. <laughs> um, some people settle for the typical thing. Living all their lives waiting in the wings. It's not a question of if, it's just a matter of time. Before I'm standing in the front of the line. Hey. I'm, okay, well, so, nobody wants to follow that, Joel. That's a goofy movie. Yes. If which, we listen if to you haven't each seen other, it, so get on it, okay? <laughs> so good. Um, way down Hades Town. Way down yeah. under the ground. I wish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one day, <laughs> one day more. Nice, classic. Another day, another oh. destiny. Really good. In the heights, that I recording. get my coffee and I go. I get my coffee and I go. Anyone? Yeah. That was in the in heights. In the heights, the music. In the heights, okay. okay. The Latinos only know the it. The Latino representation is here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, I guess the non Broadway guy will have to do it too. Yes. Come on, Amir. Yeah. What you got, baby? Do, do. Nothing's gonna harm you, yeah, not time. while I'm around. So nothing's gonna harm you, Erica, not while I'm around. Demons, Demons. are crowling <laughs> in the what? No. All right, that's all I got. Oh. This is my emo most emotional moment of Hasbro Hotel. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you so much. Amir, you should play that part. Okay. All right, Miles, how are you doing? Doing good. Hi, my name is Miles. And uh, my question for all of you is, in your voiceover careers, what was it like to voice as your respective characters in Haspen Hotel compared to the pilot that was published by VC Pop back in 2019? Um, I like I watched a little bit of the pilot before I auditioned, and then I got the job, and I asked Viv if it was okay that I didn't watch the whole pilot before I did <laughs> my thing because what I want I wanted to avoid imitating anything even accidentally, right? So not not out of like shade or whatever, but I was like, let me do my own thing so that I'm not copying someone else, right? So I, I, I didn't really have much of an experience of the pilot. I did my job and then afterwards I watched it and I was like, oh, Ed was great. I hope they like me too. You know what I mean? But that, so that was how it was for me. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, a big, uh, it, you know, we all knew that we had like big shoes to fill and, and um, coming into it with a sensitivity of like, owning what I have to bring to the table is my own intrinsic thing, you know, trying not to get lost in a comparison mindset, but also doing my best to do justice to the material that I knew so many people already loved um, so much. And that was a big thing, you know? I mean, I, I did watch through the, the, the pilot probably, um, probably twice before we, we went into the recording studio, but there was an element of that, of just like, okay, let me step back from this. Let me just kind of get into my own zone with everything and not have every, anything to like compare it to and, and just let it fly, <laughs> you know? Yeah, part of that is like, I didn't trust myself to let oh, it fly, sure. right? So like, I, I, that, I was kind of like scared to watch it almost, right? <laughs> and, yeah. But so I, I totally respect, like, I'm going to watch it and then I'm going to do my own thing. I was like, what if I don't do my own thing? Yeah, and no, I just yeah. end up being a bad photocopy, you know what I mean? I just didn't want <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I think it's kind of amazing that we were able to like actually see the world before we even did it. That's never the case. You just like maybe, maybe, you don't even sometimes see artwork of your character. You don't even know what some of the artwork looks like oftentimes. So it was just like such a blessing to be able to like get a vibe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hey, Charlie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Kaden, and my question is in around one sentence, what does Has Been Hotel mean to you? I'll just say it in one word, um, community. Wow. Fuck, you picked mine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what yours is in one sentence. Fuck, you picked mine. <laughs> Chaos. Order. <laughs> Badassery.
Oh God, I'm gonna be really, really sincere for a second. I've this is my first like real big uh, animation job, so for me it's very much a dream come true. Yeah. Fuck, you took mine. I wanted to do this forever. <laughs> I wanted to do this for so long, and it's so hard. <laughs> so thank you. Um, uh, mine would be family. Like, I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into and being a part of this. And, and you guys, it's just so special. And y'all are so special. And I just feel like what this show creates is, is really, really wonderful. It's a family. It's a family, you know? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I am Tyler. Um, and... I have a question for all of you. I was wondering if all of your characters played D&D &D together, <laughs> what classes would been they asked pick? This. What oh, classes? No, I'm a, I'm a dungeon master. I lead the game. <laughs> I love this. I, come on. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, OK. Um, I think I answered this at an, at another convention, but I can't remember what I said. So I'm gonna I'm gonna think hard. I remember um, what I said. I think I think Angel would probably pick for himself some type of charlatan background. Definitely, I know that's not class, um, but but of course, because like why the fuck not? Um, so, but then uh, okay, maybe no, it would be magic. It would probably be a sorcerer. It would probably be a wild magic uh, sorcerer, sorcerer, so that he'd roll on the like wild magic table, and like any any shit could happen at any given time, and he'd love that chaos. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Amir. No, I just like look at Blake. You should play D and D sometimes. I love sometimes. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're so weird, and I, I fucking love DM you. I want to DM a campaign with yes. you guys. Uh, I'm gonna give the same answer I gave last time. I pass. <laughs> I don't understand the question or the world, and I'm not going to make something you'd up. You'd be like a you be. I'm not. I'm never going to lie to you, people. Uh, me neither. Joel said it'd be a warrior or a paladin. I don't know. Is a dragon an yeah, option? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a dragon. dragon. <laughs> I'd be some sort of like spellcaster, some sort of because I don't want to actually get involved, but I want to like, <laughs> like God. send send the magic, but like I don't want to get hurt, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys soon. <laughs> by the next, by the next con, I should figure out what class I am. I want you to pass every time. <laughs> you and I, you, you and I can look through the player's handbook together. Hello. There's a player's Hi. handbook. Oh, there's a player. Hi. There's a lot of um, handbooks. Everyone else's questions were so serious, but um, my name's Irene. You guys are all marvelous. I have a question for Amir because Alice is my favorite character. This is no genuine shade. I want to know who is responsible for his haircut <laughs> because <laughs> if he needs some tips, I have a few. <laughs> There's someone on Twitter's uh, name, not their at, but their name is Alistair's fuck ass Bob. <laughs> Somebody do it of Alistair walking into a hell hair salon. Just be like, I'm just feeling like a little bit shorter today. <laughs> like, just like a little bob, like something that goes up, like something up. To <laughs> that I can't do your voice, so that's what you sound like to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess take it up with Viv. Yeah. She yeah? she made it up, she made it up in middle school, so she. <laughs> we can assume it was him, right? Rosie wouldn't do that to him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Alistair cuts his own hair. <laughs> He's cheap. Alistair's cheap. God, does he cut his own hair or is he is he, he has a bob made for radio to like get a minion to do it? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. Sorry. Thank you. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Alistair's fuck ass bob. <laughs> I'm so I'm so mad at myself for giving them attention. They're gonna like they're gonna see this right now and be like, you, you call me out. Hello. Good evening. My name is Nim, and I have a question for Christina. If Serpentis survived in episode eight, 
would have Cherry Bomb returned his kiss to him? <laughs> Look, I don't know, to be honest. I have my own theories, but all I'll say is that her line was, that was kind of hot. So I mean, props to her. Props to her. <laughs> She's amazing. I love her. Oh, thank you. I love I love Sir Pedras and Cherry. <laughs> Have a good thank evening. you. Thanks thank for the you question. So much. Wait, what's the what's Sir Pedras and Cherry Bomb's ship name? Cherry Snake. Cherry Snake. Cherry Snake. Cherry, cherry Snake. Cherry Snake. Cherry. Is there another one other than that? Is there? Sir Bomb. Yes, yeah, Sir Bomb That's is Sir lit. Bomb. Oh my god. I think Sir Bomb to me is more cool. I know, Sir it kind of is. Sir Bomb, yeah. Okay, I, I like, like them that. both. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag it. Hello. Hi, my name is Annie, and I was wondering, what were your, like, some of your favorite parts about recording your lines for Hasbun Hotel? Like, what were some of your favorite moments, like, some of your favorite lines? I think my favorite... It was more of the lack of lines. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part of yours, it, too. Yes. Uh, can yeah, I get you know, like Kamiko was... made a whole character with, like, sounds. <laughs> that's a, that's really it's hard like to do. Grumbling. <laughs> no, but, like, my favorite is when she just, like, freezes in front of the camera. Like, it was so funny to me on the script, but the way they animated it was so perfect. It made me laugh so much. I loved it. My favorite was um, the scene between Cherry and Serpentius, Miss Bomb, all that stuff. Our our voice director, Richard, um, oh, so he loved like making the voice like and he loved doing that scene with me in because, you know, we record separately. Um, so we don't record with our scene partners, which is, you know, hard. But our voice director, Richard, is so into yeah. it with us and he is awesome. Yeah, Richard. yeah. So that was my favorite scene to do with him. <laughs> my favorite in hindsight is this is not stupid it's just a game <laughs> so but just did it just so now please try to do this i love you so much uh, crack is expensive <laughs> He said crack is expensive and you screamed. <laughs> I fucking love y'all. You're so chaotic. Uh, my favorite is so, so subtle. Like no, no one has given this a second thought. I know it. But it's a moment in the finale um, when, uh, when I go, ah, it is time to lend a hand. Or it's time to take a stand. That ah, ah, like yeah. I could hear all the other people in my ear and it sounded like such a great, like it, it felt like a powerful chorus. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that ah, ah, I could still like, I can hear it when I listen to that moment and it just like, it makes me feel fucking strong and cool. <laughs> Well, that finale, that's the song we're all in. That's the one yeah. song all season that all of our voices are one. in, yeah, which is pretty huge. powerful and amazing. When okay. I recorded, Erica's voice was already on it. It was cool. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, I'm saying it here because what I want us to do one day is I want us to do a live concert of like all the Hasbro songs. And here's the thing. You guys have to ask for it because that's how it will occur. So just, I'm putting it out into the world. We love these songs. We love our songwriters, Sam Haft and Andrew Undenberg. Give them a listen. They're the best. The reason you love Hasman Hotel is not just because of Viv and because of us up here. It's because of Sam Haft and Andrew Undenberg. And so, like, round of applause for them. I insist. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, so listen, we are out of time. However, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What if we go like 10 more minutes? Yeah! By the way, this is not okayed with the people in the back. But you guys are amazing. And I'm gonna stop talking so they can talk more. Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name is Maddie. And um, can I just say for a sec, like you guys are like so amazing. Um, I wanted to ask you, this is a question for all of you, um, for each of your characters, 
what kind of music or like what music artists in like specifically do you think your characters would listen to? Cool. Joel. Oh Joel? my God. So when I go this, uh, uh, I listen to a lot of um, Kim Petras. <laughs> um, slut pop and then slut pop Miami because that just truly gets me in the mood for Valentino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think Cherry Cherry's a rocking girl. I think she's a rocking girl. I think like like eighty. I'm thinking like eighties rock. Like uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, like some yeah, like heart and like blonde. Like that's what I think of when I think of Cherry. Yeah, one another. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what does Normalize passing when you don't have something interesting to say. <laughs> Probably like thrash metal. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> no, Nifty Nifty just has like soft jazz to clean. Stop. Like just to clean to. <laughs> just background music to clean to. Well, Nifty loves stage diving, so that's yeah. right. Nifty stage dives. That's true. Yeah. Good call. Alistair loves jazz. I mean, that's that's canon, right? <laughs> I feel like <laughs> Uh, I feel like Angel, what he would like really, really listen to when he's like deep in his feels is like he wouldn't tell anybody this because he'd probably like listen to a lot of like Kim Petras, like slut pop, you know, type shit. But then when he's like in his bed alone, probably like Nick Drake or something, you know, <laughs> like Blunt. like really, really introspective, like acoustic, you know. Yeah. You're beautiful. I feel like you'd <laughs> think. You're beautiful. You'd I think guess. like musical theater, but I think what she'd actually listen to as she's a queer icon is like Muna, Robin. I feel like she'd be like into like that as opposed to her outside is that, but her inside is like queer icon pop. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. What's up? Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. My name is Chanel. It's a pleasure to see you all. Quite a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I love you guys. The songs are awesome. The, the characters are awesome. And you, you're, we're definitely looking forward to more to come. But my question is for everybody, if there were to be a has -been Hotel movie, what do you think it should be about? <laughs> Nifty. The Egg Boys. <laughs> I, I, I could see like a Pixar style movie being made just all about the egg boys. Egg boys take Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the minions, like like, like Despicable Me, but it's about egg Serpentius and his egg boys. There needs to be like there needs to be like a roach tap number. Uh, <laughs> yes. Good question. Yeah, same answer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Bye. Thank you. All right. So in order to, I, 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 in order to, to get through as many, if we can get straight to our questions again, we want to try to get through as many as possible. That's right. Hello. How? Hello. Uh, how would Alistair react to all the simps drooling over him? All the simps. <laughs> I think. I think. If anything, Alistair believes he deserves more simps. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hello again, Kamiko, and hello again to, or, or hello to everyone else for the very first time. Hi. Um, okay, so I know there's a lot about certain characters that we don't know yet, um, but I'm very curious, what do you think is each of your characters' best attribute that is going to p potentially help them gain that reformation or redemption in upcoming seasons? Well, Nifty's very clean. <laughs> very tidy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not positive that Alistair can be redeemed. I don't know if he's interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure about Cherry either. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm lit I literally don't know. <laughs> okay. And Val's dripping in Riz, you know? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it's probably going to help him later. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's I good think all people. I just want to say that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi. My name's Rose. I met some of you already, but um, I just was wondering for the people who 
came to voice acting from theater. How did you make that transition and how was that for you? I'm surprised it's not more of a thing, to be honest. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're really, I think Broadway and musical theater people are really like made to do this because it's all about theatricality and, and bringing these characters past the microphone so that y'all can hear them and feel them. And that's similar to how we feel on stage when we're trying to play to the back of the house. So I think it was, it was kind of a seamless transition yeah. for me personally, it felt. Yeah. The, the, the only thing that is different, but it's what is so fun is that in theater, you have like a rehearsal process and this is, we get the script maybe 48 hours before. So the most fun thing about this is that we get to use our theater background and our training, but then we get to call upon what we don't get to do often in theater, which is go with your fucking impulse, like balls to the wall and just put it all out there because we only have a two hour session and we need to give them as many choices as possible. And that is like being a kid in a candy store. Like no choice is too crazy. It's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is a totally random question, um, but what for all of you, what uh, flavor drink would your characters be? It could be alcoholic, it could be non-alcoholic, <laughs> just anything. I feel, uh, I feel like Angel would be like the booziest Shirley Temple. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, dirt, a dirty Shirley. Yeah, I was gonna Shirley. say a dirty Shirley because it's cherry. I was gonna say Shirley Temple. <laughs> Oh my God, Dirty Shirley's uh, all around. Val is just like uh, espresso martinis, just <laughs> on, just keep maybe, them coming. Maybe Nifty's like Ramune. Does anyone know that? Japanese people? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it, I, I feel like Alistair would be Fireball. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I know what Cherry is. Cherry is shots! <laughs> You don't have to answer, you can pass. Like like Mentos and 7-Up when they just like explodes. <laughs> Milk. <laughs> Thank you so Good much. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. All right, so we, we got um, about five minutes left. I, I, you guys are doing great. What would y'all say is your character's favorite movie? <laughs> American Psycho. <laughs> Not a fan of the art form, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know if we can answer that. I can't. I, uh, I don't think Valentino can answer that question because <laughs> they're adult. It's an adult, some sort of adult film <laughs> that actually that Valentino made, that Valentino directed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Charlie must rewatch The Wizard of Oz a lot. I feel like she's got that vibe and she sees like the good in everybody and wants them all to get a second chance and yeah, just makes sense. I feel like maybe Labyrinth? Like, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Hello. Uh, hi. Um, in y'all's opinion, if Mimsy had not interrupted at the end of Hell's Greatest Dad, who would have won that musical battle between <laughs> Alistair and Lucifer? Mimsy! Uh, obviously Alistair. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Tay, and my question is, what has been your best fan experience like at a con in general? It's hard to it's hard to rank them, <laughs> but today, someone, um, uh, a Persian girl, gave me a uh, Persian themed Alistair piece of fan art, uh, and uh, Tuesday is Persian New Year, and uh, and it was a really really special moment. I like I actually almost like cried right there. Like there, uh, you know, I, I've, a lot of uh, a Persian folks tell me like it's so awesome to see. Uh, a, a Persian guy holding it down and playing this awesome character. Um, uh, you know, I'm always wowed by the fan art, but but something sort of tapped into like, also I just spent a week like on vacation with my family. And so like, I just feel really connected to my family. And uh, and to see that piece of art, it was it was quite moving. Yeah, it was really cool. Y'all are amazing. And I'll, I'll, post, I'll post it. 
All right, so I think we have time for one last quick question, unless we can make it super quick. Okay, um, if you're no longer able to play the character you currently voice, and you had to give voice to a new character in the show, who would you voice? One that exists already? Yes. Oh. I mean, Pentius. <laughs> <laughs> the Egg Boys. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, Blake. I love them. Uh, I love them too. Kiki. Um, probably, probably. Kiki. Oh. <laughs> uh, probably Lucifer. Hey, bitch. I probably do. I want to be Mimsy. No. Yeah, Mimsy. No, wait. Yeah, Mimsy. Who's like, it's me. Right? Yeah. Because that bitch, she's so fucking cool. And she just <laughs> pops in, in, out, bam. That, that's, that's, the, that's the role you want. That's the princess track. That's what you call the princess track. Uh, Susan. <laughs> Who played Susan? Was it, was it you? I played Susan. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, really? I Unfortunately, I have to be the bad guy. Go ahead, Ray, give, it, give me the booze. Go ahead, give me the booze. But, yeah. but. You're worse than Susan. Here's what we're gonna. <laughs> here's what we're gonna do. How about we have, we have like, there's a thousand people in line. I'm gonna count to three. You are all gonna yell your question out at the same time. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. It's so the wildly answer, The answer is serpentious. <laughs> <laughs> Please, one more time. Give it up for the cast of Hasbro Hotel. So what we're going to do now, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. We're going to do a stage selfie here. We're going to do... Yes, we're going to go... Well, we're going to be... We're going to move these tables here. All right, all right. Uh, if we can have the cast stand or stand right here in this center square, center square, like it's Hollywood Squares. One a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. All right, everyone, let me get in. Let me get in. Everybody in? All right, everybody on the count of three, say happy day in hell. One, two, three. One more time, give it up for the cast of Has Been Hotel.